Hello, I'm in Svalbard and since I couldn't bring many books, I've borrowed many books. So I'm here with a library haul. Since there's a polar collection in the library here, I thought I would take advantage of that. Several of my books will therefore be books about the Arctic and the polar regions. The first one I have is this one. It's Nord for the Öderhav or North of the Desolate Sea by Liv Balsta. It's the memoir of the wife of an earlier governor of Svalbard. It's in Norwegian and relatively old, but I think I will enjoy it. Then we have this one, Kvinne i Polarnatten, or Woman in the Polar Night, by Christiane Ritter. It's the memoirs of a German woman who was here in Svalbard. Then we have some books in English. This one is Shipwrecked on the Top of the World by David Roberts. It's about four sailors who are shipwrecked in the far north. Then we have Tudor Adventurers by James Evans. It's about the 1553 expedition to find the Northeast Passage. Then we have this library book, which I brought with me from the library in Trondheim, called Blameless by Gail Carrier. It's the third in the Alexia Tarabotti series, or Parasol Protectorate series, and I've been enjoying the other ones, so I think I'll enjoy this one too. Being in this majestic landscape really inspires me to read poetry, so I've borrowed a few collections of poetry, both from the north and just general ones. The first one I have is Visma Dö, or Us Who Are Dead, by Karin Fossum. Then I have this one, Stein Till Stein, or Stone to Stone, by Jon Fosse. Then, moving a little bit further north, Alke Kongerike, or Ork Kingdom, by Kjersti Eriksson. These all have pretty short poetry, and I don't really know much more about them. Then I have this book, Svalbard med rötter i permafrosten, or Svalbard with roots in the permafrost, by Sunöva Haga. It's a book with poems and photography from Svalbard, and I'm really looking forward to this one. Then we have a few books that I've actually already read, so I'll give you a short review of each of them. We have this one, Svalbard Poesi, or Svalbard Poetry, by Ellen Linda Nielsen. It has short and sweet poems, uh, really inspired by the nature up here, and some drawings of the same style as this one um, to accompany them. I really, really like this. Uh, it captured some of the wildness that I haven't yet seen and made me look forward to my stay here much more. I kind of wish I could write poetry like this. Finally, we have this one. The Dark Rose by Cynthia Harrod Eagles. It's the second book in the Morland Dynasty series and it's set during the reign of Henry VIII. We get to know two of his wives, Queen Anne Boleyn and Queen Catherine Parr, through one of the main characters, who is their lady-in-waiting. Some of the main characters are quite whiny in this book. They just seem to never be content with what they have, even though they have a lot. And every time I read a book like this, it really makes me think that I'm happy to be a woman living now and not in this time, because all the decisions of the women's lives were made by men or sanctioned by men. And I really just like being my own person. So overall, I really like this book. It gives you a really good idea of how people lived in those times. Uh, their everyday lives and the problems that they faced. That is what I usually look for in a historical novel, some insight into that period and kind of how I would have lived if I lived in that era. So yeah, I will probably continue in this series even though each book is this thick and I would highly recommend this series if you're looking for good historical novels. So just to give you a sense of how weird it is when there's midnight sun, I'm filming this at quarter to nine in the evening and this is the view out my window so i'll see you next time Hada.